Yeah, we're in uh, central British Columbia between Nazco and, and Quenelle. It's an area that um, is relatively dry and the soil that we're looking at here I think is fairly representative of a lot of the soils that we find here. And Paul's going to tell us something about uh, the processes and what we're looking at. Sure. Well this is an example of, a, of a, an orthic gray luvisol uh, formed on a medium textured morainal deposit. Uh, this is probably the most a common and extensive soil type, as you said, in, in the central interior of BC. Uh, the characteristics of this soil, uh, which are really noteworthy, is the, the contrast in color between the AE horizon up here and then the BT horizon, which is actually quite thick. It extends down to about here. Now, these contrasts in color also are accompanied by quite pronounced differences in texture, and you can feel that uh, difference in clay content quite easily. So we have a thin forest floor here, perhaps only two to three centimeters in thickness, and this ashy gray layer here is the AE horizon, and then we have a transition into the BT horizon, which has noticeably stronger structure. It also has a higher clay content, a more clay-rich texture. So up here we have textures that would be loam to sandy loam, down here probably closer to clay loam. And in addition to the strong structures that we see, these angular or subangular blocky structures, we also see that on these aggregates there are very obvious clay films that in, are the visible evidence of the translocation of clay. So these are aggregates from the BT horizon and you can observe that on the surfaces of these aggregates there's a shiny film of oriented clay spread over the surface. Here, you can see it here, and here, and here. And that's the, really the manifestation of the dominant process at work in forming this soil, which is the downward translocation of clay and its accumulation in the BT horizon thus producing this difference in texture. A loss of clay from this part of the soil and an increase in clay down here. So this is clay which hasn't undergone much modification, by, if any, by weathering. It's simply been translocated from one portion of the soil profile downward. So do the muted colors tell us something about that as well in terms of transformation of minerals? Yeah, so there really hasn't been very much chemical weathering in this soil. We don't see very much release of iron oxides, which if they were present would uh, give it a much more reddish brown color. And mm. so we tend to find that most of these luvisolic soils in this region of the province tend to have this uh, rather drab appearance. Until you get to higher elevations where the climate is moister, where there's more leaching, more weathering, then you would start to find soils which are transitional to the brunisolic or podzolic order, where you have a greater degree of weathering, chemical weathering, mm -hmm. and much stronger colors. What are we looking at here in terms of organic matter in this well, the soil? Yeah, the, the forest floor here is probably about uh, three or four centimeters thick. Now this site has been uh, converted, it's been logged and converted to a, a forest plantation. So the thickness of the forest floor that we see here may not reflect mm -hmm. what you would observe in, a, in the uh, original uh, mature mm -hmm. stand. Another thing to note in terms of rooting is if you look at this portion of the exposure here, you don't really see that many roots that penetrate very far into the BT horizon. And that is simply one more indicator of, of uh, how, uh, how strong and uh, effective a barrier to root penetration this is. This is a very difficult material to dig through and it's not a big surprise mm -hmm. that it's difficult for roots to penetrate it. If you uh, think of uh, snow melt or rainfall on this site, um, how would you anticipate that water movement to, to interact with this uh, physical mm -hmm. structure here? Well, what, what you would tend to find in this soil is uh, in the springtime during during snow melt, which would probably be when the in this climate, which has only about probably 500 millimeters of precipitation a year, the wettest soil conditions would be during and after snow melt. And at that time, you might, in some sites which were maybe less steeply sloping than this one, uh, you might see a temporary perched water table resting on top of this, this clay-rich bee horizon. On a slope, you would expect to see some lateral movement down mm -hmm. slope. Mm -hmm.